flip man, flip man. It's the flip man. Flip man, flip man. You want some money in your hand? Flipping houses without credit or your cash. Get that bag. What's happening? Today's Flip Man's Daily Live um, Q and A on wholesale and real estate without using your cash credit. Um, we're here to uh, answer your questions. If you want to access my YouTube video, they're all over the place. It's for they're not in any organization. Someone took out the the time, their precious time, and organize them in the playlist so you can access those through flippinard.com that's flippinard.com uh comps101.com is where if you need your properties comp because you don't know what the arv is you can submit those there we're still doing those for free comps101.com is where you can get that arv for a property you're not sure about we'll send you over a video explaining how we got to that point um every oh the title of today's thing is what is it uh today's daily is uh what if the owner is deceased meaning they're not here anymore they have passed away now what what do you do when there's a owner uh the owner of a property is uh is deceased okay before we get into that um, everything you need is at this number for the most part. If I could send myself through the number out the text, Tyrone, I, I would do it. It ain't possible yet. So in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, you text, if you want to use, the, if you want a copy of the contract that I've been using since 2003, text the word contract. If you want to uh, partner with me because you have a deal on the contract, uh, but you don't know how to find a cash buyer or whatever, text the word, I mean, text the numbers 5050. Needs to be on the contract. You need to be dealing directly with the owner. Needs to be a great deal. Needs to be off market. All right. Um, buyer's list. Trying to build a buyer's list before you get started, I have your answer. Trying to, you need a buyer for a deal that you have, or you don't want to partner with us, then you can build your own. So text the word cash, C A S H, to the 205 964 5243. You know, show you how to do that also. We're going to skip the next two. Uh, close. If you have a contract with your seller, have a contract with your buyer, you're going to submit those over to the title company or closing attorney, which you shouldn't do until you have both in place. Uh, you need to give them instructions on who's the seller, who's the buyer, the address, obviously, uh, the sales price, who's paying what and who's receiving what, namely your assignment fee, also who's paying closing costs. If you want those instructions and my closing detail sheet, access to it for free, text the word close to this number. Um, the next thing is, uh, you're trying to text message, afraid of cold calling, or that hadn't been working out for you. Now the next best thing for you, text the word text, T-E-X-T, -E to the 205-964-5243. Out driving for dollars, want to know who owns that vacant house? Boom, text the word vacant to that number. Want to join my group wholesaling real estate with the flip man? Cause you want to network with others like-minded or you may just want to know what title companies or closing attorneys or wholesaler friendly in XYZ city. That's a great place to network with individuals all over the country. So text the word group so you can join my Facebook group. If you have trouble getting in, just hit me up. We have some, some minimum guidelines. Some people don't have a Facebook account or whatever. So you have to probably, let me know personally. I'll make sure you're approved. Probate. If you're trying to target probate uh, list, text the word probate. Probate situations, rather. rather. Uh, and the whiteboard. People, be, people want this whiteboard right here, right? 
So I took a picture and made it available. So text the word whiteboard. Guess what? Of course, I didn't know it either. I think about it. Whiteboard is one, whiteboard is one word, I'm told. So you send two words, it's not going to respond back to you. All right, so boom. So on to the, uh, oh, I forgot the CRM. Uh, oh, man, what am I talking about? It's, it's, we're still giving away the $1,000. Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, Mountain 6, Pacific 5. So if you want to enter the contest, text the word STEMI. STEMI is spelled, I'm sure it's a made up word, but it's spelled the way we spell it anyway, S-T-I-M-M-Y. Text it to the number, you're in. If you're trying to get additional entries, more chances to win, that thousand dollars we've given away two weeks already. We gave it to a lady in uh, Adrian in Augusta, Georgia, and I think my name man name is Travell in Milwaukee. So two weeks, we got three more weeks to go. You could be the next person. So if you're trying to get multiple entries in, all you have to do is uh, show send me a uh, screenshot that you signed up uh, Digulator AK. You signed up for PropStream through my site Digulator.com for the five day free trial which that's basically the tools, a lot of the tools I'm talking about here. Uh, we use it every day, every day, all day, to find and put deals together, help us put deals together. If you screenshot that you signed up, we we'll get you four additional entries. So now you would have a total of five for the uh, five chances to win that eight, uh, $1,000. Lastly, uh, if you need a CRM to manage your leads, you got bandit sign leads, direct mail leads, cold calling leads, driving for dollars, text messaging, other wholesalers you're going to JV with. Those need to already always, they all need to be separated from each other because you need to know what's working, what's not working. All right. So, and also if you have a cash buyers list, all of that could be uploaded into one pipeline. So now you can reach out to whether sellers or buyers by text message, email, uh, ringless voicemail and by phone call. The great thing about the phone call there, the conversations are recorded. And so um, now you can go back and listen to the conversation. You might have forgot something, the tone of the call, or if you have someone working with you, whether it's a partner or a VA, now you can go back and listen to their conversations also, not only to see if they're doing the right thing, but if they're doing it at all. So text CRM to the number 205-964-5243. Okay, so um, deceased owner, that is going to be a common uh, situation, especially when you're driving for dollars, you'll find out that the person is not alive anymore. All right, so the first thing you want to say, well, what's next? So normally the process goes is that it's the next of kin. Uh, in some situations, it may be a husband or wife, whichever pass for it, then that's pretty much easy. Because normally the, that ownership automatically goes over to the spouse. Not always, but normally it's how it goes. So those are easy. All right, and depending on the state, the pro probate process may be as simple as that person just having an air affidavit saying that they've known them for two years or whatever. So some states you still have to go through the entire probate process. All right, the next layer of possible kin would be kids of the deceased. So if they had three kids, then those and they didn't have a will now. Assume they didn't have a will, a recorded will before they passed. Then they would have to go through um, the probate. But if all three kids, again, it depends on the state, agree to sell and agree to sell at a price that works for you, then boom. But in whatever situation, whether it's three kids, one of those passed away and that child sibling had four kids. So now. It goes from three people having to make a decision to six. You know, so it can go on and on, but that's the process. You have to find out who are the remaining heirs that actually have a say so, assuming they didn't have a will. If they didn't have a will, if they did have a will, then it's just an executor of the estate. Normally it's a child or a relative or whatever that makes that decision. Sometimes it's an attorney that makes that decision on selling or whatever. So they don't have to technically get everyone else to sign off on. They may get their opinion, but that one individual, maybe two or whatever, will sign off on it. So uh, those, are norm those can be some really powerful.
highly motivated situations because sometimes they have no attachment to the property and then sometimes they do have attachment to the property. My first deal that I ever did was based off of sisters that inherited the property from their mom. Like a lot of people, we ain't selling mama house. We got two many memories here. Baba, we'll just rent it out. So going through that about five years of renting it out to non-family members and family numbers, not getting paid, having to repair the properties, guess what they turned into? From loving mama house to tired landlords, which was an opportunity for me. You know, they were just wanting to get rid of the property. So there you go. Oh, time to take a drink, that was a lot. <laughs> All right. Um, we've got a bunch of comments, people just she saying. She left. Yeah, that's okay. um, People just saying, good afternoon. Um, Ooh. Someone from Facebook asked how you were doing. Good. Um, the kid Vante from YouTube said, "Hey, what's going on, boss? Just got the book. I'm ready to light up Atlanta. Light it up." Um, Eric from Facebook is saying hello. Um, this one says, "Please, how can I contact property owners on PropStream?" Well, you have their name and, and mailing address, so you can send them something in the mail, assuming the address is not the, well, I guess it could be the same, depending on who you're targeting. But the mailing address, you send them something in the mail, um, or you can go knock on their door. Ken did that yesterday. Didn't tell you that, Jessica. She volunteered to do it. I said, oh, if you're going to do that, the apartment building, uh, you know, we couldn't get her to respond or anything. We sent her some in the mail. We tried to call her. And uh, she was already outside. She was already outside, but she said at this time, she only said, talking about COVID slowed her down. COVID has somewhat been over for, in the sense that preventing you from doing things. She ain't gonna do nothing with that. Yeah. This time the next year, unless she sell it, we don't get it or whatever, she still have not done nothing with that, that property. This is the same situation <laughs> when, when people have cars in their yard that have been sitting there for years, ugling up the neighborhood, <laughs> we're going to fix that car. No, you're not. You're not going to fix it. Get rid of that junk. You're like, you need to let us take that junk off her hands or whatever. Anyway, so, um, but anyway, so you got that information. You can skip trace within PropStream. That's an option. Or you can use skip to flip. So that's how you contact those are ways you can contact potential owners or owners, potential motivated sellers. All right, on Instagram, they said, good afternoon, Ty. Greetings, Ty. Thank you for your time and service. Um, somebody sent a comp, and they haven't heard anything back. Any? Uh, when did you send it? All right, follow back up with us. And then also on Instagram, this person is trying to find a comp for a property in Augusta. I follow, I follow the appraisal rules, but I can't find anything close in the radius that match the criteria of the appraisal rules. Um, then you have to go nearest and best at that point. Is you understand area? those rules. Are, if there are no comps in the area, period, then that's easy. That's nothing you probably should pursue. And on the one that, that sent the property over to be comp now, you have to make sure that the phone number that you entered into the form is correct because that's how we're reaching back out to you by text. All right. This is also on Instagram. A seller just told me, talk to my broker. But on PropStream, the list, the listing failed. Could the seller um, not know this? Um, no, it's not a situation. You, you should have Googled the address, and uh, it may have been relisted and hadn't been updated in PropStream yet. And then sometimes they may still be dealing with them. I don't know. You, but if you uh, uh, Google the address, um, it's listed probably up here on Zillow. Somebody just said, can you repeat the number? But the number is behind him. Oh, the number is right here, right here. 204, I mean, 205-964-5243. All right, let me scroll back up. Okay. Um, this one says, I've been sending messages to that number and no information sent back to me. So you may want to check your carrier. It could be your carrier blocking you from receiving the text. Yes. And um, if, it's, if you were too mobile, uh, like 15%, I've been told uh, uh, about like 15% of their customers have to contact them and let them know they want to receive business 
text, I think is what it's titled. Well, Timo yeah, owns Metro. Timo and Metro yeah. same, mm -hmm. so. If that's the case, then that could be. And also, if you actually send like messages, like, hi, Ty, my name is blah, blah, blah. It's not going to automatically send you anything. He well, has to like go in and he'll well, respond. Well, yeah, I'm going to respond to yeah. those too. But, but yeah. if you if you were just trying to send like one word text, you have to make sure you spell the words um, correctly. So if you want the contract, you got to just write contract. has to be spelled correctly. Can't be any emojis or anything. And it'll automatically um, text you back what you need. Okay, so this one says, good day, Flipanthropist and the ladies of Flipness. Hi. Good afternoon. Eric stuff, ain't right. We're going to tell you. <laughs> um, <laughs> this one's from Michelle McDonald. She said, if the owner of the house is deceased, the house will be in probate court if the owner left the will. Um, well, it, it, it's going to be, you know, the states, you know, each state is different on how that's handled. But in Alabama, they got a will. They got to wait a little bit of time, but not much. But if they left a the will, then they're going to have an executor of the will, and that's going to be the real decision maker. All right. This one's from Black Guy on YouTube. They said, question, uh, does one entry enter you for each payout, including the bonus part of extra entries? So I guess they're saying, like, every week do they need to No, no, you don't have to re-enter. Uh, once you enter, you're in. Once you're in, you're in. Now, if you're trying to get the extra entries, then you'll have the total of five. So. Mm -hmm. The only way you can get more interest beyond that point is just have someone else to, to, to say, you, you know, to, to go in with you or whatever. So hopefully someone interested in the business also, but, you know, whatever. This one's from Kaz on YouTube. They said, I have a seller who wants 240K. The ARV is 295. Property is in ready to move in condition with no real work needed. Would you call this a deal? Uh, this on the surface. I think I got my, where's my other phone at? Over there. Huh? It's on the table. Okay. Um, um, oh, you sent the text out. Good. Yeah. I forgot to tell you. Um, so what did you say? 290, 295? Yeah. Let me see. 295 times 70. We just, you know. So we're at 206 off the top, right? So we know 240 doesn't work. We hadn't even subtracted any repairs. I can see that. Mm -hmm. We hadn't subtracted any repairs or anything. We ain't got to go no further than that. That don't work. That doesn't work. I already knew it, but I just want to show you. All right. Somebody made a statement on that, Instagram. Well, before you say that, that's what my deal calculator is for. And you can go to dealulator.com to access it. It's free. Or you just text me calculator and I'll, you know, send it to you or whatever. So. All right. They say, I really appreciate you giving away information. Um, Thank you for watching, consuming. All right. The next question is, so when you ask if they uh, have any tax liens on the houses due, do you tell the title company or the end buyer? Well, the title company is going to figure that all that out anyway. It really doesn't matter. The title is going to come out in the title search, right? And so the buyer, you sell everybody, everyone's going to know what the issue, what what the issues if there are any. All right, would you suggest um, on market leads or driving for dollars? Driving for dollars. Best for a newbie, driving for dollars. Properties that are already listed with agents, that's just a whole different ball game. Most most uh, most um, newbies just not ready for that. All right, this person just want to make sure they got it right. So if you can't find any comps in the area, you shouldn't pursue it. Yeah. Well, now, if there are comps in the area. If they can't find comps. If there's zero comps, mm -hmm. oh, most definitely. That's easy. If it's zero comps. I think it still be comps in the area, but they don't really technically match up with your property. You just have to start to adjust it at that point or whatever you nearest and best, especially if they within a certain boundary of your property they're not crossing any major streets all right with the demand being so high right now um are sellers more hesitant to sell or lower well some are but the ones that have motivation or not the same motivation will exist i don't care what the market is doing um if someone has died and you have a, a relative which is top of this that don't doesn't care about the property and really need money and need it fast they don't care about what they could get, 
uh, 90 days from now. They need it today. <laughs> Most of the people we deal with, they don't want to go through that long process with an agent. Because even if you got a contract on there, most people have to do a mortgage, that's 30 days probably. They, they want it less than that. And so that's normally why they want the speed of what we offer is why they like to deal with in the business line. They don't have the patience or they don't have the uh, whatever their situation is doesn't allow them to wait that long. You know, so motivation is just life, man. Life can be a you know what. And a lot of times it can concern lack of money. Right. This one says, should I drive to a different city to find deals? Mm, depending on what, what, what city are you in. If your city's a decent sized population, um, 250 or more, 150 would work in population. Um, 250,000, what I'm saying. Okay. Um, good. Should be this good. one's asking, how do I run comps in Texas? Well, Texas is a non-disclosure state, so you're just not going to be able to pull up uh, sold properties that are not listed on MLS. Uh, prop stream batch leads will pull both of those, um, which I have video, you know, you can, well, yeah, you're going to have to use one of those, sir, because they'll pull MLS data. All right, this one's from Tila M. on YouTube. She said, Tila in the house. What's up, flip man in the crew? What's happening, T? This is Bye. right on time because I'm targeting probates and pre and pre probates. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Hassan Black said y'all need y'all. I need help. I think I found a deal, but it's a condo. I'm not sure if well, I'm. Hold on. Oh. Assessing it correctly, would it be just like a normal house? No, no. You're gonna compare condos to condos. Hopefully, in that condo. Um, you, you, your, um, um, there, there are a number of transactions in there, and then it, you know it'd be the same as a house. So you're going to compare condos to condos as far as uh, coming up with an ARP. All right, this is on Instagram. Is wholesaling a mobile home the same as a single family home, or is there another procedure for that? Well, if land is included, if the, the land that the mobile home is sitting on, or the lot that it's sitting on, yeah, because now you can close on it. Because well, technically you're buying the land a lot and you go through the title process, sit down with an attorney or a title company. If it's just a mobile home and it has to be moved, first thing you got to come up with a value for the mobile home, okay, which could be difficult. Ideally, what you can do, reach out to mobile home dealers in the area and see what they would pay for it based on the year it was built, the manufacturer, the size, and they're going to probably want to know where it's located. Not not ideally the dress, or now you get into the moving expense of it. Sometimes it'll cost what well, a lot of not sometimes a lot of times it'll cost more to move the mobile home mobile home than what it's worth. And then the transaction of a mobile home is more like an automobile. Like you find a car on Craigslist and you can go meet the person, give them the money. They you all do a bill of sale. They sign the title. You sign the title. It's yours now. That's the same thing with a mobile home if it has to be moved. But if the land is included, you have to go through a closing process. So, so that's how you can easily get cut out of a mobile home deal because it's more like a transaction with a car or whatever. And so if the seller and buyer ever meet, you know, a contract really won't probably mean nothing. If they meet, because <laughs> they sign that it can literally happen in two minutes. Yeah, so you just, I get the one way, I guess the one way you could do it and I hadn't did a lot of mobile home stuff, so. But you can set up owner financing with the seller, and then now you have some form of ownership, I guess, at that point. And then you can either trade out the, I mean, wholesale out the, the terms or whatever, so, you know. All right, this person said, hello, good day. Where can you find some good leads um, by using PropStream? Um, well, it, it, it's, a, it's a wealth of information. Uh, that can be used or manipulated uh, to do what you're talking about. So depends on how what 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 form of uh, marketing or how you're going to reach out to a seller. Advertise you're going to reach out to a seller. You're going to use that information to uh, to mail them something or to call call text call or text ring his voicemail whatever. Um, so that's the first thing you have to establish. Now you're going to figure out who are you going to target? 
Are you going to target high equity? Are you going to target figure and clear? Are you going to target divorce? You know, just go down the list. So once you determine that, then now you can create those lists and start to target those. So, but you know, I can't tell you that that's going to be on what, what you prefer or what you think uh, would be the best list to target type of potential motivated sellers. All right, Jennifer Lee from YouTube said, I'm sending out 100 postcards from mail to flip. This will be my second follow up from uh, sending direct letters. Hopefully I get some leads calling in. OK, all right. Please. Now, Jennifer, I'm going to always side on doing something. We we'll applaud you for that. Now, 100 postcards is not a lot in the postcard in the, in the direct mail business. But hopefully uh, you'll be able to shake a deal or two out of that. All right. But again, um, I always side on doing something versus nothing. All right, Lavelle Lewis is just saying, God bless and thanks for your time and effort. You're um, welcome. Thank you for being here. Ryan Newton from YouTube said, Hey, Flip Man, I, I bet more than a few of us are confused about the nitty gritty of the paperwork. Oof. And you break down in as much detail as possible what happens right after the seller signs the contract. I don't like to explain any of this as being easy, but if there's an easy part, it's the paperwork, right? So once you have a seller sign the agreement, now it's time to find a buyer for it. To get them to sign an agree at, agreement at a higher price, and you get the difference between each contract. If you have a contract with the seller for $100,000, hopefully you have a buyer that's willing to do, we'll say $108,000. So they're going to sign a contract may not be, you know, the contract to use with the seller, but the terms need to line up. So now you have a contract for one hundred thousand dollars with the seller, a contract for one hundred one hundred eight thousand dollars with the buyer. You get that eight thousand dollar difference. So once a title company or a closing attorney is chosen, normally the buyer may do that because they're the one paying for it. Um, then that's where my closing detail sheet comes in. That's why I'm talking about text to work close and that document um, explains who's the seller, who's the buyer, the price, obviously the address, who's paying what, who's receiving what, namely your assignment fee and who's paying what would be a part of the uh, closing cost or whatever. So hopefully that makes sense, Ron. All right, this one says, um it's from YouTube. <laughs> Is that should I post vacant lots I have under contract to Facebook? Most definitely. Okay. Someone said, God bless you. You're changing lives out here. I hope so. All right. Joy Martin said, hey, Ty and ladies, I closed on my first deal. It was a vacant lot in Philly. No cash buyers are responding. Um, now I'm panicking. If I did comps wrong or just did or just not the cash buyers list or Facebook groups are not good. Wait a minute. She said, I mean, yeah. She so said, it's not like she got the house under contract. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah. You, okay. Okay. Yeah. About, okay. That was confused. Okay. All right. So that means you, you said you closed on my first, you mean you have your first deal on the contract. All right. So uh, what did the count number one, what do you have it under contract for? If you care to share, and what did the county say the, the, the value of the, the lot was? If you could reply back, Joy. Oh, if you want to join us live, and people send Gator after we get off the show, but if you want to join us live, just text um, the number, text the word Gator, and uh, we'll get you pushed to the front of the line and get your question answered live here on live stream. Platform. All right. Um, this person said, hello, wondering where to find a good motivated sellers list. <laughs> well, it, you, you won't be able to just find like a list of 100 people and all of them are motivated to sell. Uh, I, I wish it was that, that simple. What you will do is you may uh, create a list. Um, if you go, well, If you text the word text to my number, uh, the 205-964-5243, even though that video is about text messaging, in the beginning of the video, I show you how to build a list. So you may build a list of uh, 2,000 people to text. Um, 
three of those may be deals. So you have to reach out to possibly 2,000 to get, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just giving you a number. It's not like you can just get a list of motivated sellers and then all of them going to, well, I wish it was that simple. So you have to reach out to the masses of individuals that own real estate and just let the numbers play out that your timing is good. Um, now you can increase that uh, level of opportunity by who you're targeting, but it's still like most of them are not going to want to uh, sell at a price that works for you. All right, what's a good price to always negotiate? Okay, um, that's what the, uh, the the calculator on my site, uh, dealyourlater.com. If you don't know how to spell this up here, but deal you later is the word calculator. Remove the C A L C, replace it with D E A L, dealyourlater.com. Um, but uh, that particular uh, tool will explain, well, it, it gives you not, but still, you still have to know what to plug in. It starts with the ARV repairs then how much you want to make. Uh, that's going to come from you continuing to watch my videos. If you, um, if you just text the word, um, um, but you just text me and say, uh, send me videos on how to determine if I have a great deal or not, something like that. Uh, only number will we'll send some information over. But you can go to YouTube and do the same thing. Just put Flip Man in front of it. All right. This person just made a statement, which we know. Y'all forgot to go live on TikTok. Uh yeah, we uh have been suspended from TikTok <laughs> live. Um I think because we promote the um the uh, giveaway that that's against their uh what they call it privacy policy or whatever, a user privacy. All right. Um are there any other sites besides batch driven and prop stream? Mm, there's some other tools out there, there's plenty out there. There's plenty. All right, where do I go to find virtual assistants? Um, Fiverr, Upwork, and just Google. Fiverr is spelled F-I-V-E-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-
right? Over a seven day period. That leaves 92. We just going to say uh, seven days. We'll just give you a whole lot of time just to screw off, right? So seven times, um, let me see what I want to do. Uh, so we're going to give you six hours a day to do whatever you want to do. F all time, family, whatever you want to call it. So that's that's 42, right? Am I, am I right? On? Yeah, that's 42. Oh, I'm right. That leaves you 50 hours a week to do this business. <laughs> now, that's a lot of time. So my point is, my man, I'm not trying to pick on you none. Oh, we got time. Because he said he only works eight, right? He said nine to five. So I'm assuming that means he only works eight hours a day. Even if I cut that 50 in half, right, and gave him another five hours a day to do whatever he wanted to do, or sleep every one, I guess that's doing whatever you want to do. It's still at 25 hours a week to work on this business. So you, and then you say you got money to do it with. You got, you got to put the work in, man. It, it, period. That's, that's what I'm getting to. You, you're in a position that most people don't have starting out here. You have sound like a, uh, some money to put into some marketing that makes it easier for you to do deals and to start making money, but you still got to put the work in along with that. All right. Um, I'm guessing this person is asking about something about earlier with mobile homes. They said you said mobile home dealers? Question mark. I'm not sure. What you People that sell mobile homes. Oh. You know, just like you have car dealers, you have mobile home dealers. Okay. Yeah. You know, so just like um, you could. Uh, They'll probably try to get you on the lot, of course, with a with a car, but you can call them, especially if it's a newer car, and ask, hey, I got a car, just paid for it, whatever, what would you all get for it? And they'll probably try to give you an SMO or the phone. They really want you, they really want to get you on the lot, but they if you force them, they but same thing with mobile home dealers, they know you can't get the mobile home on the lot. So they'll probably just go ahead and yeah, if they buy used mobile, first you got to establish that they buy used mobile homes, which most of them do, then they'll probably tell you, you know. So then now you have a number to go by. You want to probably call two or three. You have a number to go by, and that's how you'll negotiate the deal. All right. Who does the repairs on a vacant home? Uh, now, we're talking about wholesaling here. You're not going to do anything to it. The person that you wholesale the property to, uh, the, the cash buyer, whether they're going to buy it to fix and flip or buy it to fix and rent out, that, that's on them. That's one of the beauties of it. You don't ever touch them. All right, this person is having uh, issues located next to kin of a deceased owner. Well, um, I'd love to ask them what, what have they done to do that, but um, a good website to do that with is intellus.com, I-N-T-E-L-I-U-S.com. That's a good website to, to pull up a, a next to kin, but once you do that, then you have to start skip tracing them or whatever. It's, it doesn't cost that much. All right. This is also on Instagram. Can you make material explaining different searches on a quick search on PropStream? I, I have videos on that. Um, but if that video, it tells you, you know, I didn't go through each one of them, like divorce and foreclosure, really the same thing. You know, it just depends on how you want to search it or whatever. So that video, if you, if you text the word text, T-E-X-T -E to the phone number in that video, I show you. Also, if you text the word vacant, um, well, I'm sorry, no. If you text the word cash, I show you how to do it also. All right, if the seller decides to drop out of the deal in 30 days, do you have to do further paperwork? After that? Well, ideally, the right way to do it is to send some uh, either an email or an actual agreement, a document saying the cancellation, you know, whatever, either you sign it, they sign it, or whatever, so, or both. All right, um, let's see. Oh, I read that one. Okay, Jennifer Lee said she's talking about the person who backed out after the inspection period. She said he ultimately had to buy the property from his assignment fees. And because he gave the tenant his word, stating he would buy it and not his partner or investor. I don't understand. She was saying that 
Um, if she, okay. She said, my question would be, what do you do if a, ca a cash buyer backs out at the last minute past inspection period? You gotta find, try to find another one. So she, this is her response to that. Okay. She said he ultimately had to buy the property from his assignment fees and because he gave the tenant his word stating he would buy it and not his partner or investor. Um, so it's like, I guess he bought it instead of letting the cash buyer. Oh, I, I didn't understand it, but. Um, he actually bought the property. Not who was he? The, the wholesaler. Okay. You know how you be saying, like, tell them your capital. Yeah. Like, the and then was to... Oh, now he's trying to just sell it. Yeah. Okay, you know, that's fine. You know, I've done that myself, but, you know, it wasn't because I was scared, but <laughs> I thought I could actually do something with it or whatever. So, but I get it. Okay. I'm not, I'm not answering the question. Yeah, you did. Okay. Um, let me go back to it because I feel like I missed something. Um, this one says, uh, I think I found a deal. It's a condo. Talking to the seller now, just not sure from assessing the numbers correctly. Would it be just like assessing a house? Yeah, you, read that. you read that one. Oh, okay. Sorry. This one says, high time driving for dollars in Georgia. I see highly overgrown grass. My web search suggests the owner is dead. My next search, children, courts, spouse, not sure on my next move, thanks. Yeah, um, first I would ask the neighbors, see if they know the individual and know the relatives. That's the first thing, that's free. Uh, you may want to give them some incentive if they do to reach out to them or whatever, and they may just give you the information because um, they're tired of looking at their house. Uh, in their neighborhood. Hopefully that's the case. If that doesn't work, then I just mentioned the site in tellus.com that you can look up possible relatives and you can skip trace them. Okay, so Andrew the Sage asks, um, the closing detail sheet can be used with your contract and the cash buyer if they want me to use theirs, right? Well, the contract um, with the seller, it, that's, not, that's not enough for the negotiation. The contract with you and the buyer, um, yeah, uh, as long as it mirrors, allows you to do it with, it mirrors the contract that you have with the seller or come close to it as far as the terms. The closing detail sheet is really not for either one of them. It's just for you to send over to the title company or the closing attorney to make it easier to, uh, you know, understand the situation, you know, how the deal is put together. All right. This one says, hey, I'm trying to acquire my grandparents' vacant land in Tennessee. It's up for foreclosure. What would be the best way to go about acquiring the land from them? Um, well, if it's up for foreclosure, then um, uh, meaning uh, it's in pre-foreclosure, meaning they're behind on payments, then ideally what you should be able to do, um, I'm assuming they're going to work with your, your grandparents, the payments just got to be caught up. That's it. To get it out of foreclosure, the payments have to be caught up. And the lender may short sell it, you know, because it's laying also. They may short sell it and take a discount on it. But when you do that, they're going to want the full amount if they give you a price. So it may be just easier just to catch the payments up. All right. Mary Wilson eggs. Hello, everyone. I was wondering, does the person have to be on live to get the comps from you or can they text it? Well, the comps you just submit to uh, comps101.com. Okay. If you're trying to get a property comp, just text, I mean, submit it to the site comps101.com. Okay, this one says, what does the investment percent on the deal calculator represent? You're thinking in terms of the investor, uh, the 30% discount off ARV. That's what it means. 30% discount on what it would be worth fixed up. And that 30% represents part of their profit, part holding cost. So, so now you just, you, instead of doing 30% times the ARV, you say 70% times ARV. Well, 30% minus the ARV, you say 70%, which is the same thing. All right, somebody asked on Instagram, where is lunch coming very soon? Actually, we have it coming, but you know, the mukbangs on Wednesday, we've right. been, uh, but that was two weeks ago, the last one, right? So, yeah. 
you already answered this, but I'm guessing that they didn't hear you. Um, is it possible that the seller could not know that the listing expired with the realtor? Because I called the woman and she told me to talk to my bro. Talk yeah, that's that's possible, you know. Um, you know, then the, that'll be a question you say, well, uh, normally when a property is listed with an agent is uh, for sale online because that gives them most, more exposure. You may want to check with your agent to see if the listing is fired. The agent may be not so professional or that they may not have even let the seller know that it's not listed. And they may just be still be, just still have the sign that you're hoping that will still find the buyer, even though it's not listed online for sale anywhere. You know, I don't, no way for me to know that full situation without you know actually speaking to the seller or the agent. All right, where or are you doing I, that? Where can I get abandoned signs? Um, if you um um. Oh wow, okay. Um I'm at the basketball no. All right, so um uh you could text me just banner sign and I'll send you the information. But the company is dirtcheapsigns.com. You'll want to actually call and speak to uh speak to um someone in sales and just let them know I sent you they'll give you a discount. Okay, back to the next of kin question, trying to find the next of kin. Yeah. Um, so can you go to the tax office and the funeral home? Uh, well, the funeral home may know because they may, they may have a, a copy of an obituary if it was created through them or whatever. So that's the possibility. You never thought about the funeral home. But the, the county, uh, I know here they, you wouldn't be able to find it that way. All right, this is also on Instagram. Hey, Flip Man, a family friend has a vacant commercial property that's bleeding her. How would I go about wholesaling it while also making it so she wouldn't have to pay a lot of taxes after the deal? Well, she go, Well, the only way she wouldn't pay the capital gains when she get that money, it's placed into a 1031 exchange, from my understanding. Um, hopefully, it's a property that would be attractive and it's in a great location that would be uh, easy to move. But a 1031 means she's going to have to purchase something else, I think, within six months of a similar property or whatever. So, All right. This one says, what is the meaning of option to deposit to seller? Option to deposit to sell. I'm not sure what that means. Well, what is that on a contract? What, what, what type of transaction it is? This one says, the earnest money to the title company, do you have to have that on hand or is that all paid at closing? The earnest money to the title company, do you have to have that on hand? And it's, it's normally paid within a couple of days after contracts are signed, a contract is signed. Okay. This one's from Rashad Seaton on YouTube. They said, do you ever just give up on finding a property owner that's hard to find or skip trace? Oh, all the time. Uh, this one says, I have a motivated seller and buyer, but the buyer has a bank loan. Can this still be a deal for me? On that last question, before I answer it, don't, don't, don't click this one off. Okay. Um, now, the harder people are to find, some of those turn out to be some of the best deals that you ever have because everybody else is having a hard time finding them. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind. Even though I say, yeah, I give them up on all the time, just, but keep that in mind now. That the harder they are to find, a lot of times those turn into some of the best deals. Um, but uh, have I have a motivated seller and a buyer and buyer, but the buyer has a bank loan? No, no. And then no, it needs to be cash. All right. And then this one says, I have a few friends that want to learn how to do this, but they want to wait until I make a profit. I... Mm -mm. <laughs> 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 My man, uh, is that a male? It says key. Okay, yeah, that's a male. Um, do not mention this again to your friends. Right. They will see, <laughs> I'm assuming, <laughs> some of the things that you do normally, uh, you, you're going to do them differently once you start making money. I wouldn't tell them that now. They don't want to get on board now. I say you still want to share with don't get me wrong. They just to see your success in this. 
or your, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Your efforts paying off. You, hey, you can't make someone else. You know, don't, don't talk about it to them anymore. Just, just show and tell. Don't talk about it anymore. And, and guess what, Keith? In most cases, they still ain't going to do nothing after you start making money. And you tell them. That's, that's part of the reason why you're looking at me right now. Is when I got into it, I was telling anybody that I thought we wanted to listen. Spent a whole hour with him explaining it to him. Guess what? He did nothing with it. But I said, you know what? And once I decided I was going to start doing the stuff or whatever online, or whatever I said, I'll tell people through my videos, you know, how to do it. But if you want my time, like some real time, oh, I'm going to charge you for that because I know most people ain't going to do nothing. That, that's, that's just real. There ain't no bad thing. You, know, you tell me about some, another business. You know, I, I might not do that or whatever. So it just everything ain't for everybody. So, so I can tell you this. I would guarantee if it's 10 of them, maybe one of them will do something. Let me just say that. Maybe one of them will do something. All right. This is on Instagram. And, oh, wait a minute. The way you handle that, if they really want to know, you tell them to go watch my videos and then... They got questions after watching my videos, you'll fill in the holes. But if they really want it, they'll take the time out like you're doing now and do it. That, that, that's how you handle it. That's how I suggest you handle that. All right. This is on Instagram. What's a good way to get a proof, proof of fund letters? Well, if you're just going to go down that rabbit hole, realpof.com, real, R-E-A-L-P-O-F.com, we're getting some bad food if they about to close. <laughs> I know they're that clouded. No, she can't be for what? How's it out there? No, she would have bought the food in though. Um, all right. This Ooh, they got mad at her, all that food she ordered up there. Oh, oh well. Yeah. Um okay, ain't spitting my stuff. This is the last one <laughs> that I have. It says, Would you suggest to use a harp? To use hard money to acquire a property as a beginner real estate investor. No, uh, I don't recommend. Is she out there? What? Oh, okay. You came in here quiet as a mouse. Oh no, we we good. We good. Um, no, no, I don't suggest that unless you already know how to handle repairs. That's your thing, or you have a good relationship with someone that you know is going to do right on the contract inside of it. No. I do not suggest that. And I know people feel like that's where you should be, right? It's buying and fixing and flipping because the money sound. But in reality, uh, if you just look at return on investment, look that up if you don't know what it means and compare spending $100, making $10,000 versus spending seventy, dollars making $30,000. Do the numbers on that on the return on investment cal uh, ROI calculator and get back with me. All right, this one says, um, oh, Look, man, I have a high value property. It was bought in 2008 for 100 grand. Current tax assessment is 1.2 million. The seller said he'll take 1 million. Property is set to increase in value by 15.7% annually. Is this a deal? I guess if on speculation, Bay, I don't know how you can guarantee. I don't know how the owner can guarantee that a property is going to increase that much. He, if he if he can predict that, he needs to be in a different business or whatever. So at one point two, on on the surface, um, I'm assuming it's a house. Um, if it's in excellent condition, yeah, that would be a decent deal um, for someone that wants to live in it. For for an investor, that may not be enough enough uh, meat on the bone for a deal like that. What that a hundred? Uh, I walk away with a hundred and a half, maybe if you're lucky. Um, nah, that wouldn't that wouldn't be worth it to spend a million dollars. Nah. All right, I'm just, I only have well one point two million. I'm, I'm well a million dollars. I'm sorry. Yeah. More like comments. Um, this one says, "How do you approach an agent as a newbie into this business, and should you make up some type of agreement forms?" Uh, I advise newbies to avoid agents for a number of reasons. Uh, they're going to want a thousand dollars earnings money. They're going to want proof of funds. Now you, the agent, just just understand what you're dealing with here. Not saying it can't be done. It's just newbies can't do it for the most part. It's just going to frustrate you right out of the business. Just think about it like this: 
that real estate agents make more money the more the property sells for. You as a wholesaler make more money the cheaper the property sells for. You all are automatically at a resistance. And most agents don't get that as far as you as a volume play. Yeah, I don't make as much money as I normally. Well, actually, in a lot of cases, they could make it more, uh, more money, but they just, their minds don't work that way. Trust me. But you can go out there and try to do it yourself. Check back with me. Prove me wrong. I love that. Uh, maybe you teach me some, but I, I know how to do it. I'm just telling you, newbies don't normally need to try to go down that path. I say the, the proof of funds, the thousand dollars earned, but dealing with the agent and, you know, they got to worry about their bills and how to negotiate. They have an influence on the seller. No, it's easier deals out there is my point. An agent, if it was 1990, yeah, an agent would have some value because they could send you some properties. But the Internet, they got this thing called the Internet now. And every property that's listed with an agent is listed on Zillow. If it's not, that's an agent should be fired because Zillow is like the Google of residential real estate. So that, what, what can they send you unless it's a property that's not on Zillow, that it's a pocket listing? They, it, before they list it, they know you'll uh, do a deal on it or whatever. But they, again, their minds normally didn't work that way. Most, not all, but most. So I don't know what value they can bring to you. Gotcha. Please educate me. All right. Somebody said they're closing on a triplex here in Birmingham on or before the seventh. And they just said thanks for everything, Footman. Oh, that's what's up. CG. And then this person said, Thanks, Ty. I'm going to talk to the deceased owner's neighbor today. When I close the deal, I'm shouting you out. That's that's it. So boom, guys. Um, it's feeding time. Time to feed the you know what. Remember everything you want. At uh, 205-964-5243, the contract, you want a partner, cash buyers list, need a CRM. Don't forget about the $1,000 giveaway on Thursday. Text the word STEMI, you want additional entries. Go to dealylater.com, sign up for PropStream, the five-day free trial. Send me a screenshot of where you sign up. You get four additional entries, so that's five chances to win the $1,000. You want the closing details sheet, you want to learn how to text message, you want to find who owns that vacant house. You want to join my Facebook group, probate leads, it's all there. So this is going replay mode on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, right after this. If you want to watch it or share it with someone else, make sure you like this. Also, if you have any questions or com additional questions, post them in the comment section of any of my YouTube videos and answer those on a daily basis. We'll see you guys on the flip side. Text me and I'll text you back. Text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. Tick tock, you don't stop. I will help you make your paper stack. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at now? 205 964 5243 Yep, yep. 205 964 5243